Have you ever ordered anything online and the wrong thing arrived at your door? Well, that is what happened to me. I ordered a AMD R9 285 and this arrived at my door. This is an R9 270X, which is about 20% less powerful than the R9 285, which is a bit of a bummer. But let's turn this L into a bit of a W and make some content on the R9 270X before I return it, because ultimately the retailer I bought it off of did make a mistake, so this is gonna get returned within the next couple of days. And we'll get an R9 285 as I promised to make a benchmarking video on that as it won the poll against the 750Ti. So make sure you stay subscribed for that. Launching in October of 2013, the R9 270X was a performance segment GPU which was aimed at gamers looking to play the latest and greatest games at the time with modest settings. It was built on the GCN1 architecture which is now pretty obsolete. It did age quite good all the way up to about 2020 until they dropped driver support for it. Even though AMD did drop a driver some point last year which does help it perform in newer games like Forza Horizon 5. It has 2GB of GDDR5 memory running through a 256 bus and it also has 1280 shader cores as well. The model we have today is the Sapphire Dual model which has a boost of 1070 on the core and the memory is clocked at 1400 MHz as well so it's slightly overclocked from the reference model but not by a whole margin and I think it is a pretty good cooling design. This thing didn't get over around 60, 65 during testing, so it stayed pretty cool and I haven't cleaned it out either, so yeah, it's not a bad cooler at all. It also features two six pin PCIe power connectors and AMD recommend you have at least a 450 watt power supply to juice this thing up to. All testing today is done on my test bench system, which has a Ryzen 5 5600G, 16 gigabytes of CL17 3600 MHz DDR4 memory, a Sabrent one terabyte NVMe Gen 3 SSD, and it has a Strix B550-F gaming. First benchmark up today is Unigen Superposition, and on the 1080p medium preset, the R9 270X got 4,427 overall. Thanks to its DirectX 12 support, <coughs> unlike the GTX 700 series, the R9 270X can run DX12 games like Forza Horizon 5. A drive that also launched in the middle of last year also helps with compatibility in newer games as Forza Horizon 5 totally flat out refused to work before this. With the low preset enabled in the in-game benchmark, the R9 270X got 31 FPS on average with a 1% low of 23 FPS. Forza Horizon 5 walks rather than runs, however this is still more than playable especially if you use the more of a console-like experience. Skyrim Special Edition is up next. This game launched in 2016 compared to the original which launched in 2011. And on the high preset which he auto defaulted to, the R9 270X got 54 FPS on average with a 1% low of 40 FPS. The game is locked to 60 so we're not that far below the engine limitation because if you put it above 60 like all weird things start happening because the physics are tied to the game's FPS. So I recommend leaving it at these settings, it's a great performance, you'll be having fun playing Skyrim. Probably the hardest game to run today is God of War 2018. I did struggle to find a pretty reasonable graphics quality setting for this game so I decided to set it to low and I even enabled FSR and put that onto quality as well. This netted us 34 FPS on average with 22 FPS for the 1% low. The 1% lows in this game were pretty poor if I'm honest. I don't really consider this to be playable. I'd recommend getting something a bit newer like an RX 580, RX 480 even and you'll be getting better performance here. F122 is usually one of the easiest games to run in my benchmarking roster and for some reason F1 performed not great today. I had to put it onto the low preset which netted us 40 FPS on average with 32 FPS for the 1% low. The performance was at least consistent I'll be honest. But if you want that 60 FPS, I'd recommend either upgrading the graphics card to something newer or putting it onto the very low preset, which does look very bad, but the performance should be looking a lot better. So this is a rare bad performance case for F1. 
Dirt Rally 2 is another game which is made by Codemasters and we managed to get away with the medium preset here. And this is because the medium preset netted us 71 FPS on average with 54 FPS for the 1% low. This was done in the Dirtfish area and this is some good performance. This is what I'd recommend putting the game on as the game was very smooth, the FPS drops weren't really there despite what the 1% low average says. So yeah, this performance, not bad. This is what I recommend playing this game at. Next up is a new game and that's Halo Reach on the Master Chief Collection. I set the graphics to the original quality and I did this in Firefight on the Beachhead map, which I think is the first Firefight map on the game. This got us 104 FPS on average with 60 FPS for the 1% low. I don't know what was going on with the 1% lows in this game, but it doesn't feel as bad as what the figures suggest. It felt quite smooth to me, if I'm honest. So I wouldn't look too far into these figures right here because the game performed pretty good. It wouldn't be a Pro Yami PC benchmarking video without GTA 5 in the benchmarking roster. I set it to high, however, this did give us a VRAM warning, which was totally fine as Rockstar's VRAM warnings are just bogus anyway because there was no performance penalty at all. The game looked really good on the high settings and it also performed pretty well too with 80 FPS on average and 65 FPS for the 1% low. This is some great performance here. I recommend playing GTA at these settings. You can run this game on a toaster at this point. So yeah, not bad performance. Rainbow Six Siege is a good esports shooting game and I recommend playing this game at the medium preset on this graphics card or maybe even low if you want to get some more frames too. However on the medium we've got 115 FPS on average with 72 FPS for the 1% low. Performance here really good, it did drop ever so slightly when explosions were going off however that's to be expected so not bad performance here, you can play Rainbow Six Siege on an R9 270X. Last game up today is Fortnite and I decided to put on the performance API as we're going to be looking for performance here. I set the settings to high as well and this netted us 142 FPS on average with 47 FPS for the 1% low. I'm not quite sure as to what's going on with the 1% lows in this game, maybe it might be caching. I thought Fortnite fixed their poor 1% low performance but judging by this, I don't think they have. Or it could just be down to the R9270X. However, that rounds off all the benchmarking figures for today and I don't think this thing did too bad at all. Not a bad showing from a 10 year old card at all. And if you haven't noticed by this point already, I'm still quite ill, so if I sound a bit off, bear with me because yeah, I'm still a bit ill. Newer games like Forza Horizon 5, they walked, they didn't necessarily run. However, I'm pretty surprised that this graphics card even was able to start these games at all. Because remember back to my R9 290 video where Forza didn't even launch, AMD did release a driver since then which does enable you to play Forza on this thing, but you'll be playing at very poor settings and very bad frame rates, let's be honest. So do I recommend buying a GCN1 graphics card in 2023 and as always, you should know by now, it depends. If you're looking to play newer games, definitely not. Get something like an RX 580, something like that, because they still have the latest drivers and it's still quite a capable graphics card as well. Or if your budget's a bit higher, get something like an RX 6600. It's a really good graphics card. I do want to test one, so maybe I might test one before the end of the year. Who knows? On the other hand, if you're playing older games like GTA 5 or esports titles like Rainbow Six Siege, you'll have no trouble with a mid-range GTN graphics card as we found out from this video and even benchmarking the R9 290 last year as well. So performance there is going to be great. And the R9 270X only costs around £35 on the used market, which I don't think is a terrible deal at all. £35, it's not a lot for a graphics card and to be fair, you're not getting that amount of performance, you're not getting a lot of performance, don't get me wrong. But if you just want to play like older games and games like Minecraft and Roblox, Rainbow Six Siege, even Halo Master Chief Collection, this graphics card is going to do you just fine. So I'll be returning this graphics card soon, It's uh, I thought I'd just get some content out of it to be honest, as uh, it's been quite a fun graphics card to benchmark. However, I want the graphics card I actually spent my money on, which is the R9 285. 
So a video on that will be coming within the next few weeks whenever I get my hands on it and I need time to test it as well. So yeah, bear with me. I will get that video made as it did win the poll. So yeah, just give me some time. However, with all that being said, I'm going to leave this video here. So if you like the video, like it, stay subscribed for more tech content and I'll catch you in the next one.